This is the Cloud Pack for Integration homepage. And the first thing we're going to show you is the deployment of a capability onto OpenShift Container Platform. For us, a capability is software that a customer would want to configure separately within the platform. This is 100% containerized. It's 100% managed by operators that are available from the OpenShift Container Platform Operator Hub catalog and also from the Red Hat Marketplace. So we click on Create Capability and we choose uh, Designer and we end up on this page. Let me explain that with software, there is a tension between two conflicting requirements. On the one hand, clients demand configurability. They want to be able to tweak all the knobs. On the other hand, they also demand simplicity. Our approach to this is to provide template deployments. You could think of these a bit like T-shirt options, but it's not just sizes. It's also colors and styles as well. You can see that we explain what each option would cost in terms of the licenses and resources. So we'll select the template which deploys the designer experience with AI. So here we have the resulting form. It's been pre-filled out by the template. And this gives the human the ability to just tweak if they need to, and also to tell us the few details that essentially the computer cannot know. In this case, that's the name and the storage class. But notice something subtle and important. The computer is giving the human as much help as it possibly can. The software can be deployed onto any cloud or on-premise. So we can't know the storage service that the human wants to select, but we will select and um, we will suggest storage classes that we can see on this cluster that would be good, good choices. So this particular cluster is on AWS, so the best storage class is GP2, and we suggest that to the, uh, to the user. So the operator that underpins this has a lot of heuristics and rules built into it. Uh, we call these guardrails, and the goal here is to make it pretty much impossible for the user to select options that aren't going to work. So this is software, but we've really adopted a software as a service mindset. Software details that matter are things like the software version, because we know that integration customers test at particular versions. So we make it as simple as selecting a value in a dropdown, and then we'll go and download and deploy the appropriate container images out onto this cluster. The other thing to say here is that this experience is all it's really doing is creating a YAML file, a, a custom resource in Kubernetes terminology. We know that DevOps engineers want to use things like this form builder to build the right YAML and then take that YAML and check it into Git and use, say, Git, GitOps or a, a CICD pipeline to deploy it. So although I'm going to show you creating the, uh, the experience using the UI, um, it's, it's possible just to scrape this YAML and then use the command line or the API to deploy it. And that's really important. So we'll go ahead and provision this. Under the covers, of course, all it's doing is creating a custom resource, um, that custom resource that we saw in the, in the UI. Um, but our, uh, our UI will then kind of keep the, the user informed about progress. Here's another example uh, where we deploy the AppConnect dashboard. And in this case, you can see that uh, we recommend a different AWS storage class because the dashboard needs file storage. So I've skipped forward now about five minutes. The designer has been deployed, and I'm going to show you the user experience to create a flow that takes leads from a Kafka topic in Confluent and inserts them into Salesforce as lead objects. So AppConnect can create an API or event-driven flows. In this case, I'm going to select an, an event-driven flow. And this flow is going to run every time a new message appears on a Confluent Kafka topic. So AppConnect follows the principle of, um, you know, don't make the human do something that the computer could do. So rather than having the user type in the topic name and potentially get it wrong or have to go look it up, we go out to Kafka, we discover all the topics that exist on this particular connected Kafka, um, and, uh, and, we, and we, you know, invite the user to select one. And, and I should say AppConnect has that same pattern for absolutely everything it connects to. It goes out and finds out what's available. 
So in this case, we want the topic called leads. And for the purposes of this scenario, our assumption is that something else in the enterprise is, is putting leads onto this Kafka topic. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to parse the messages on this topic as JSON objects. So we'll select the JSON parser. Uh, the, connector, the Kafka connector tells us the shape of a Kafka message. Um, and of course, we, you know, we want to parse the payload, not any other part of the message. Um, and here we give uh, App Connect an example message. Uh, this is the, you know, an example message that might appear on, the, on this topic. And from this, App Connect can you know, reverse engineer the, uh, the schema for that, uh, for that uh, object. Right, so what we want to do with these messages is put them into Salesforce as lead objects. So we type lead and we select the, uh, the action um, uh, to create a Salesforce lead from all the other you know, options that, that App Connect has. So App Connect will now go out to my particular Salesforce that I'm connected to, and it will determine the structure of a lead object in my Salesforce. And obviously, every Salesforce can be configured differently. And it's now inviting me to map the data into you know, the lead object as configured in my particular instance of Salesforce. So our customers tell us that for most integration organizations, their integration people spend more than 50 percent of their time on this task, on mapping data. So this is an extreme focus for us um, you know, to, to automate with AI. You know, we, get, we get a lot of benefit from being able to accelerate this particular task because you know, humans spend a lot of time doing it. Um, so we need to provide the human with lots of help. So what we do is using some natural language processing technology that we are collaborating with research on, we analyze the flow and we determine that in this case, there are nine fields that we're very confident can be mapped directly. Um, so they have a high confidence. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert those mappings first. Now for the other fields, the AI is not so confident, but that doesn't mean that it can't help. It just needs a partnership of kind of AI plus human. So for company, we have three possible suggestions, each of which has around 40% confidence. Um, yeah, we, we've managed to help the human choose which, uh, you know, the, the, just those three, but we need the human to, to pick the, the, you know, the, the, the one of the three. For phone, you know, the problem is, is similar, but in this case, we've got multiple high confidence options. Again, the human can partner with the AI. The AI has narrowed it down to three options and the human selects which one is the, is the correct one. So the last thing I'm going to show you is testing the flow. So we we auto generate some sample data based on the schema, processing that with uh, pretty much the same NLP that we use for, for the mapper or a different application of that NLP. Uh, and we can then use the sample data to check that the mappings that we've made result in a Salesforce object that Salesforce will accept and allow to be created. So we click on try this option. Um, and that will post to my connected Salesforce um, the, the, the resulted mapped object. And we check that Salesforce accepts that and we can see that it does. Uh, and this you know, essentially gives us a, a quick inner loop for developing flows. So it allows the, the developer to go really quickly on the, on, the, on the mapping task. And that was it. Thank you.